Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of AWP, the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a minute since we've recorded, but thankfully today we got a triple threat going. It is the Sean to Dan the Man and the Commission. Guys, how we doing? Did somebody say three minutes? I said a minute. Oh, my bad. Yeah, it's going to take more than three minutes for this topic today. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I'm All good. All right, I guess. I'm, you know, better than various members of the WWE roster, as it turns out. And you will know it. Better than any member of the WWE roster. Oh, dear God. So, if that introduction was not any indication, we are here to talk, we're actually here to cover two things, but uh, first one we want to talk about is Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out of the WWE, and secondly, we want to address the state of the current WWE roster. Women's roster. Women's roster, yes. Um, so, the first topic at hand, Sasha Banks and Naomi walked out of the WWE two weeks ago and the the rumblings that i'm hearing is that apparently they were not happy with the creative direction of the women's tag team belts and the feud that they were going to be involved in and the match that they were going to be involved in apparently there was supposed to be a six-pack challenge where naomi was supposed to win and go on to face bianca for the raw women's championship and per a few people backstage apparently Sasha and Naomi said that they felt like they weren't respected as women tag team champions that they were unappreciated I think was the word they apparently went to I think John Laurinaitis's office dropped off the belts and people's grabbed... jackets and they grabbed their bags and they walked out apparently now I will say admittedly so I thought at first this was a work because WWE has done a very good job of publicizing this and informing people about it and getting it out there when usually their MO is to keep this type of stuff hush-hush and sort of under the rug. But what do we think about this? Where are we? Because I know we've kind of talked like sporadically on chats and over phone calls about this, but where are we? What do we think? Now, there's a lot that goes into this because there 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 have been reports that came out that talked about the fact that the six-pack challenge was actually not even a part of it. Like, I read one where uh, they this whole thing went down, they left the arena before the match was ever, like, advertised. advertised. Now, whether that's true or not, don't know. Time will tell. Um, my initial response was, eh, kind of on brand for at least Sasha. Um, Naomi yeah, was we, Naomi was the bigger surprise in this one, yeah. um, especially when you hear that she was supposed to win. Like, there's storyline purpose in that that could have, you know, elevated stuff. But maybe they were just upset that, that all of a sudden it was being like it was like splintering them apart, despite the fact that they're the tag team champions. Um. I don't know. We're 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 gonna have to see how this all plays out. But. I mean, there is also stories that like they were at the arena. They eventually did meet up with who they were supposed to face off with, along with their third uh, tag team partner. They were discussing it. Something went bad in the conversation. Then all of a sudden, they tried to go talk to higher-ups about the situation that they didn't like it, they were upset about it, and that they decided, well, maybe this isn't what we want. So they had their own discussion, Naomi and Sasha, like, what do you want to do? No, what do you want to do? It was drawing on a stalemate to one point where they decided to do what they did. And now you have them prolong. I'm saying prolonged. They're prolonging this to a point where even on their social media accounts, they're going by their actual names, Mercedes and Trinity. Yeah. And it's like no affiliation to the WWE whatsoever. So it's like, okay, either this is legitimate or this is a really long vindicated story that we're trying to bring real reality into this situation because it seems like 
the WWE has this reputation of being in and out of the reality era. And now it's it's gotten past promos. It's getting into like their social medias, their their active lifestyles in when the cameras are not on. Basically. Exactly. Like they're trying to incorporate it everywhere wherever someone can catch it on a cell phone or something yeah. since everyone has one and can just instantly record. Well, my gripe with whether or not like the, the prospect of this being a work is I don't know what's in it for anybody. Like um, who benefits from Yeah, because you, you're taking a face tag team, right? And suddenly you're painting both of them in a, in a severely negative light. And they slam the brakes on so hard on their own right that they remove all, all reference to the company. I just, I don't see where the benefit is. Like in what's the, the buy-in out yeah. of it? But, like, it's also gone so south so quickly that if it's a shoot, how does anybody come back from this? This is this is rough. It's a rough system. I mean, it's like you can't really harbor on the idea of, like, okay, you were on a sabbatical and now you're not. You're still on well, active rosters, but you're not there. Especially when you broadcast it. Like, they, WWE was... Uh, Immediate. Was, yeah, and open. About the alleged situation. Oh, they came in, they threw a tantrum, they put the belts on the table, and they left. You can't just sweep that under the rug. Especially when it's out there and got viral immediately. Yeah, and I think that's to your point, that they're nor- that normally they would like keep this stuff under wraps a little bit more if it was something genuine. Like, I referenced the first time when Sasha walked out. Nobody said Sasha is going away for a while. Nobody brought it up. None of the commentators acknowledged it. Nothing. And it was just she went away. And then when she came back, oh, yeah, Sasha's back. And like you and I were discussing off air, Michael Cole, it's boss time and the whole theatrics and everything all over again. But this time, like, I, I think it was you that brought it up to my attention where you said, well, maybe they're acknowledging it because that was the main event, but everybody didn't get that main event, so they had to explain why we're not getting that main event. Yeah. But then we go to SmackDown, which has nothing to do with Raw, and there is Michael Cole again. Let me take you all back to what happened on Monday night. And it's like, okay, so you're really going deep into this now. You're not just letting it go Yeah, it's, on real, Raw. it's real petty. Yeah. Which, like, honestly seems like a Vince McMahon-style re- response to something. Yeah. But I think it also could factor in, um, depending on, like, we don't know. We don't. We weren't there, so yeah. we didn't see how, how exactly it went down. But maybe the reason they swept the original temper tantrum for lack of a better term under the rugs is because they were like oh all right well maybe this is a one-off and now they're pissed now they're like this is she's got a trend of acting up and throwing a tantrum i don't know who the hell she thinks she is she's been on the mandalorian she's snoop dogg's cousin blah 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 I, I could see them just being petty for the sake of being petty because they're like listen i'm gonna i'm gonna say it listen bitch we don't need you here if that's the way you're going to act. <laughs> well, here's the thing, too, is that while you're dragging her into the mud, you're also dragging Naomi into the mud. Who, which Naomi hasn't walked out. Previously hasn't had a thing, but yeah. it's, it's guilt, guilt by association at this point. Collateral damage, basically. I, I, you guys know I, I've been like really silent about the matter. Like I haven't said much about this to you guys on social media or texts or like phone calls about this I there was one I, point where you said it's actually becoming too much because we just kept on digging well not not because you guys kept at it i personally felt like it was just getting to a point where it's like you have the whole wrestling community reacting you have some people that are for this movement some people that are against this some people that are like ah who gives like literally who gives a fuck you got the likes you know? of of like you said, Dax, Dax Harwood, and CM Punk. Stand I, up for yourself. I think Bully Ray got in on this at one yeah, point. Yeah. Uh, Damien Sandow chimed in. You got all... all <laughs> Aaron, what's his name? Aaron, Aaron Steve? Ma- Aaron, Aaron Rex. No, Eric Rex, I think. Aaron Rex. He's got so many different names yeah. going by. Damien Sandow. <laughs> Mizdow. Mizdow. So you've got... <laughs> Such a great kid. Everyone across the, the industry... Not everybody, obviously, but, like, 
Bailey. Subtle. Subtle, kind of like mm, tongue in cheek well, reference. She, she referenced the quote. Yeah. I remember seeing that on her Twitter feed. She, she put a particular quote that had to do with the situation in regards to standing up for yourself. And, that, and, and it's ideal because they're friends. Sasha or Mercedes and Bailey, you know, they're friends. And, and she might have to play it politically, but she has an opinion that she doesn't want her friend to be subjected to whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big deal. But it, but I think I think to a degree, despite the fact that like a lot of people seem to not necessarily agree with her approach to it, it's a conversation that sh- should be happening. This is this was my thing the, that I wanted to get to like kind of let out to you guys because I haven't said anything in general. Yes, in life, you know, when someone doesn't agree with something their boss tells them, you know, at first it's like, okay, let's have a convers like there's ways of handling it. Yeah. Mature ways are, you know, let me pull my boss to the side because at the end of the day they're a person outside of wherever you are. And then like Let's talk about this. Let's find a way to ration between each other. Let's come up with a solution together. Of course, the unpopular approach is like, you know what? F you, I'm out. Yeah. I quit. I'm done. I, I, I don't need this. I don't need to be here. It, it's, it's just so... To me, it's, it's become a thing where it's like you publicize this so much on the corporate end of it. That, like, you made your announcers say. You made your announcers say the most cringiest things about it. And it's like, you guys could have handled it just as maturely as they could have handled it. Yeah. But you didn't. You took the salty, shady petty, way out of yeah. it. Petty way out of it. And I don't agree with the entire situation from both perspectives. Because yeah. everything could have been handled differently. Vince McMahon is known... To literally, while the show is happening, to toss the script out. Be like, no, I'm going to come up with something right on dead ass in the spot. Yeah. But this time, it's like, no, I want to stick to this. This is what I want to happen. Either you're going to do it or you're not. It's going to happen. And obviously, they took it. Okay, well, I don't want to do it. Who know? Who knows if Naomi literally was like, I agree. I don't want to do it either. Because... It could be said because, like you stated earlier, I'm Snoop's cousin. I'm I've been on The Mandalorian. I've been on TV. I've been doing interviews. I, I my name is more popularized now. I'm gonna do this again. It worked for me the last time. I'm sure it can work again. But who knows? And on the flip side, I think Cornette maybe I forget oh, who it was. I watched the full but- thing. Yeah. I, and I might be referencing the wrong thing, but one one of the the guys, uh, who the, who the hell Brian? Is the other one? No, who's the other old guy? Russo. Uh, it was either Russo or Cornette. One of them chimed in about um, independent contractors. Yeah, it was Russo. Yep. And said uh, that if you're an independent contractor, and you're not happy, like. Peace out. Yeah, that's uh, it's up to you because if you're not under any sort of, uh, I mean, technically they're under contract. But you're being rented, basically, as an independent contractor. You're not an employee. So if WWE wants to treat their people like independent contractors instead of employees, uh, as well as they, the as well as these name name brand talents get tr- get treated and paid, um, it, it's the same thing. Like if I was doing independent videography, if I was a if I was a uh, videographer for a wedding, right? And I go in, and the bride is just being a horrendous wench the entire wedding. I'm, I may excuse myself at the point and be like, look, I, I, don't, I don't need it. I don't need the money. You guys are not... You're not treating me well to the standards that a human being should be treated. Yeah. So you have rented me, and if you're disrespectful, and you like, it, there has to be, I would imagine, granted WWE is the ones drafting it up, some sort of clause in there that addresses these things. So, who knows? So, like, it, it, to, to, you, to go back to your analogy now, if you were a videographer for, let's say, Warner Brothers, yeah, you're under contract, you're under stipulations and rules that you have to abide by. 
regardless of how you're treated because you signed a deal, you signed for so and so years and multiples amount of money. Yeah. Well, and there's you decide like, you know what? You're not listening to me. You're treating me like crap. Yeah. I want out. Yeah. And like that's the tricky thing with contracts, right? Is like you can technically be in breach of contract given whatever it says, but there tends to be situations where you can still quit. Like you can still quit your job. Yeah. Um, it's not like you sold your soul. You no, sold your labor. No. So I was just gonna say I came across this I think today or the day before where it said apparently Sasha and Naomi made it very clear that hey, if we're winning the tag titles, we want to be in a storyline that focuses on the tag titles. We don't want it to be hokey and gimmicky and yeah, we're putting the titles on you, but it's really going to be secondary to what you guys are doing. So I don't know. I think that maybe some of this aggression has been building up since WrestleMania 38 and the weeks that, you know, came after that. But I guess, I mean, you kind of addressed this, but I mean, I guess we'll get into it. So everybody has their opinions on the walkout. What do you guys personally think? I'll get started and I'll say this is that number one, I've come to believe that unless you were there and even if you were there, we don't know what the full story is. It becomes a he said, she said, they said. So we don't know. But if we're going off of what what's been published and what we are being told on a weekly basis on the broadcasts, um, I, I brought this up in the group chat and I said, Austin, who's my hero, um, he's guilty of this as well. There was a time where he wasn't happy. He walked out of the company and WWE was very bitter. And back then they had the confidential thing that they would do. And they they publicized it too. JR talked about it. Vince talked about it. The Rock. The Rock. Everybody. Like they, even back then they had a way of like publicizing it. Like, oh, you walk out on us. You take your ball and you go home. Well, okay, we're going to stick it up your ass. Um, but I, you know, I love Austin. I love Naomi. I obviously, I love Sasha, but in my personal opinion, walking out is just not the way to do things that if you don't get your way, you walk out. Now, I don't know. Maybe there were dozens among dozens of conversations that we don't know about where they said, Hey, these tag titles are becoming a joke. I thought you guys told us that it's going to be serious storytelling and we're not getting that because Okay, let me just throw this out there in the spur of the moment. Ever since Sasha and Bailey won those tag titles, give me one other moment when those tag titles seemed relevant. Oh, I'm sorry. You said seemed relevant? Seemed relevant. <laughs> yeah, that's my point. <laughs> so uh, it's that thing of like, okay, like if you're not going to do anything with it, get rid of it. Kind of like the 24-7 championship. Yeah, we you, didn't have it. We didn't have it before. Yeah. And <laughs> honestly, we need to have it. I was thinking about this before. I wouldn't be shocked if they put, if they implemented the titles to be like, check, that's off our list. We did it. Now everybody can go home happy. Well, we'll, we'll get into that more in another episode yeah. about the um, complexities <laughs> of a women's tag team division. But yeah. uh, uh, but yeah. I'll, I'll let me let me wrap up mine. Yeah. I don't agree with it. I think that for if conversations couldn't save this thing from happening, maybe be like, okay, Sasha and Naomi, take a week off, take two weeks off, take some time away, go rest, clear your mind, and we'll discuss this further. If you feel like there is nothing for you guys here that grabs your interest, then we can further discuss that. But I just feel like to, to walk out, especially if with Naomi, who doesn't have a history or anything like that of walking out or powering like or reputation. whatever. Yeah. So I don't agree with it. I don't like it. But by the same token, it's like I get it. When you get very frustrated, you kind of just want out. You don't want to hear any of it. And yes, they are independent contractors. But if every time you don't get your way to be like, I'm out, it's like, okay, WWE does have the reputation of taking people back, but not everybody takes people back. So who's to say if this was a different company and you just walk out of cold turkey, they might be like, all right, well, we're done with you. We don't want anything to do with you. Well, to go off of that, like bringing back Damien Sandow's comment, it's theater. If you're not happy, like Graham Barrett, it's a show. Like, do you... <laughs> Uh, not to say egos don't get in the way, but, like, do you think that the the knights at medieval times 
throw a ten- temper tantrum when the, the blue knight wins on. instead of the the green knight? No. Like it's literally just, before showtime. Yeah. Like, um, this is boring. bullshit. I'm out of here. Tell the queen to shove it. No. That's not how this works. <laughs> By the way, that's the blue knight saying that. <laughs> and so um I like I agree with him to a degree. Now, um yes. In a, should conversations take place? If they're unhappy, should they bring it to the people in charge? Yeah. If they take it to the people in charge and they still don't listen, then at that point I feel like that's where the conversation of like, hey, bud, uh, we're not digging this. Uh, we'd like a release from our contracts. And then they can piss off to some other uh, promotion. But, uh, God, I would... What I would give... What I would give to make the money Sasha Banks makes to wrestle. Come on. like To got... wrestle or to sports entertain. Either one. Well, it kind of brings it back to that point where is it just about money or is it about being in interesting feuds and actually enjoying the sport of wrestling? Well, of course. It, there, there's an element of, want, uh, of thirsting for uh, a, a satisfying story but they aren't like the main focus focal point right now and if if you ask me from a performing standpoint it sounded like those two or at least her friend was about to get that but the other one couldn't take it probably because of ego but there was also kind of, like i i heard that maybe she was going to face the other one so like we don't know it's we it's we don't not, know what yeah. what the plan was we don't know what the actual story was but Regardless, like there's there's people sitting at home doing nothing, and you're on the show. Like there's got to be a certain level of like uh, appreciation for your situation in that alone, to where you treat it with a a higher regard than just all right, we're good. Here's the belts, deuces. Gonna go gonna go blaze up with Snoop. <laughs> all right, so I. I... Again, I think I should chime in with what I feel about this because honestly, it's it's been a lot. I I even said it. it it's become a thing where it's like you're publicizing it everywhere. Everyone's saying something, and it's like you don't really know the full story because yeah. they haven't said a word. They haven't spoken to anyone about it, whether it's privately to like friends and family, publicly on social media. To all your fans and or to to just whoever wants to hear or the, whoever the wants to. The purging of social media does speak volumes though. It it does and in and in this era now and this time that we live in, it does. If this was twenty years ago, totally different story. Because you'd literally have to be like, alright. Oh, they took WWE out of their top eight. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, even further, they're not friends anymore. <laughs> but um, my my thing is this: like, like I said earlier, there's ways of handling it, ways to not handle it. Personally, and I don't think I've said this to any of you, but I personally think Sasha is pulling a Sasha. She's handling this in the perspective of like, well, why can't I get what I want? Why are we doing it this way? Why can't we do it how I want? Like, she probably had an idea, and they probably shat all over it. And she's on her high horse of her ego, because she has one now, even higher than what it was before. And it's like, why? Like, literally, I hate hate to do this one, but it should have been me. It should have been me. Well, to counter argue, like if Sasha feels that way, okay. But I mean, Naomi is a grown woman; she doesn't need someone to, you know, she's not a little child where it's like, oh, mommy's going in that direction, I will go in that direction as well. Or big sis is going in that way. Yeah, I follow big sis. Like you have a brain of your own, you know. But so. who's to say if, if 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 it's not Sasha? Because we're all assuming it's her. That's my thing. Yeah. Is that what if it know. was what the, Naomi? Yeah, not to say that she's. Because we don't know. We honestly have no idea. But she's in the family. Like, she's in the... She's connected directly to the bloodline, who is the cash cow for this company right Currently, now. The meal ticket. So, yeah. even though we have a history with Sasha, 
Like, maybe there's a kinship in that where now Naomi feels like... Why am I not getting roached? Maybe. Dan! Why? Maybe the uh, (laughs) title match between (laughs) uh, Bianca and Naomi was not... It wasn't going to put her over. And maybe she thought, what's the point? Maybe, like, I could see this being the conversation. Okay, so I win this six-pack challenge, right? I go on, I face Bianca, and I lose... What's the point in that? Maybe Bianca wasn't going to put her over. Uh, not not to say Bianca said, no, I'm not going to. But maybe the plan wasn't for that. So if like, you're not, admit, like you're saying, like, oh, Bianca, don't put her over, but give her a decent match. Yeah, because what, what does that benefit her? Mm-hmm. That doesn't put an extra spotlight on this tag team. It doesn't make the women's tag team titles look more prestigious just by proximity to Bianca, who, God bless her, is not a Roman Reigns level talent. She's great. She's a great performer. Well, we'll dabble into this in a second here, but you know, fair to say we all love Naomi. We think that she's one of the best performers, quite honestly. She's very athletic. You know, she's very, very always athletic. She to have a really nice personality. If you watched any of Total Divas, yes. She's, she was always one of the, she was like the, the, the straight man yeah. of the group a lot of the time. Kind of the gatekeeper. Um, but it would once again be that scenario of an Austin Theory or Bianca Belair two years ago where, you know, she's not on the TV screen. She's all the way over here. And then, boom, she's in front of your face. And I'm supposed Bam! to... Bam! <laughs> More just <laughs> like that. <laughs> no, that's bang. Um, so... Pow! Are you saying pow? Pow! Like what Kobe you Go on. Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't think we should leave it to that segue, but but yeah, no, that's my point is that even and yeah, you're right. There was that speculation of oh now Naomi maybe gets in the women's title picture and then they unify the Raw and women the Raw and SmackDown tag team uh, or the Raw and SmackDown women's championship and then she kind of becomes right next to the bloodline and it's the overall package. But you're not pushing her because of her character. You're not pushing her because of fan praise. You're pushing her because, oh, one more little trinket we can add on to the bloodline. Like you would see it as the weakest link in that chain. I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Weakest link is definitely not Naomi. Um, well, she she's kind of the X Pac of the DX Express. <laughs> no. I'm just saying, like, she's not on the same, quite the same tier as the others. Yeah. X-Pac was still, he was there, he was your, he was your reliable little weirdo, but, um, yeah. He was, like, actually. If you, if you, if you find correlation between all of those people, who's who? Triple H is Roman. Roman. Uh, Paul Heyman is Stephanie. Uh, the New Age Outlaws. The <laughs> Outlaws. <laughs> The, the new Usos age are the new outlaws age. are the Usos. Yeah. And then... What about Sean? Sh- oh, we're talking about DX Express. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. This and, is post-Sean. And then you got Michael. Naomi, who would just kind of be there. She, she'd be... She'd be high, She'd be higher than Tori, but... For the record, <laughs> I'd rather watch a Naomi match than a Roman match. So that tells you. But we're talking about the, the, the interpretation within the company. So, I don't know, like... Well, because, okay, you would expect Sasha not to get mad if that was the plan of, you know what, Naomi, we're going to pull you out of this tag team deal, you're going to be on a singles run. Sasha's like, well, wait a second. Because Sasha was usually the single, you know, on a single run. You put her into the tag team, and I said it back then, you're doing it for the sake of just having her on the show because you got no plans for her. Yeah. So you slap her and Naomi together, you slap Shayna and who's the other one? Uh, oh. Natty? Yes. Uh, there it is. It slipped my mind. No, for a I know. Second. It didn't slip my mind. It's just, I don't want to say it. <laughs> the Catwoman. Um, don't even say Oh, God. The Dominatrix. Um, huh. But it's it was just the case of, okay, I can appreciate the fact that you don't have any plans for her, so you guys lump all these tag teams together. Sasha finally gets her moment, she gets a win. But then two, three weeks later after Mania, like, okay, yeah, well, this is pretty much done its course. We're going to pull you guys apart. Naomi's going to go on a singles run. 
there is no plan for it. Now, if it was organic, where maybe Sasha turns on Naomi, Naomi gets the better of Sasha and then goes, I'm moving on to bigger and better things and I'm going for the Raw Women's Championship. Okay, there's a natural progression there. But when you just go, nah, we're going to split you guys apart. You go and you're going to do the singles run. Sasha, you just kind of dwindle here until we figure out what we're going to do with you. But, like, I'm sitting here and I could draft you out a plot, like, a plot line for both of them that, like, kind of works and sounds similar to what rumor has it was going to happen. I, I think any of us in this room can plot out a draft of what would be a lot better than what WWE does. <laughs> but even to your point, like, maybe Naomi goes over and she's still a, she's a face versus um, Bianca. And then Sasha turns turns on her, and she's she goes and she's the heel to Ronda. And then you have both of them in the title picture, and that splits off the tag team, and then you can focus on the mishmash that is what's left. But you're not wrong. Either not way, wrong. like that, I think. Are there any final thoughts on this? Because I feel like this leads us into the, the yeah. general status, yes. the general state of the women's roster as a collective. Yeah, again, I just think it could have been handled better, and then other people should just if you don't really know. Yeah. That's my final point on that. Dan? I've said, I've, I've spoken ad nauseum. I feel like I kind of took over at one point. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's I mean, that's what this is for. Is you to kind get of all correlated what we're feeling. And it's, I do, like I said, I didn't say much because honestly to me, it's, it, there's not much to say that's already been said. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, my final sentiment is I don't agree with it. I don't like it. I think that there is a m more mature way of handling them to essentially do say what they did with Austin, take your ball and go home. But I don't know. Time will tell. We'll see what this is. So, on those notes, mm -hmm. let's talk about the collective women's roster. Because I There's a women's roster? Well, that that's the conversation we're about ah. to have. The state um, of that women's roster, for being specific. I'm going to tease the next episode a little bit more to kind of give some context for this. Okay. Um, we're going to record another episode here soon, and in it, we basically boiled down the roster to who, like, bare essentials. And how how you basically don't need all these extra people kind of just on the payroll, because you can get by, and we took some liberties. Um, but you can kind of get by by reducing your roster instead of watering it down and s just having so many people that you don't have stars. Yeah. Or you don't have people that you can shuffle in easily to different angles. Now, the struggle that we ran into um, was, specifically was women's tag teams. There's not a ton in there. And, Wait, there's tag teams? And figuring out who out of who is there and i think we we none of us took anybody from nxt we said no no so no. this is just people officially on the women's ro or on the wwe yeah, roster Ron Smackdown. and it wasn't great like it wasn't a great situation because you don't have a ton of stars and especially when you have two of them just dip I would like to correct you. There are stars. It's just they're not being pushed. Because, look, who's to say well, that I, I wasn't taking away star potential. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I know. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm saying that the talent and the potential is there. Yeah. But it's just the backing or the, the rocket that needs to be strapped onto them for them to go to those next levels is not there. Well, like one example that I'm, I'm sure will come up in... On, on your end of this conversation is Alexa Bliss, who was on the bench for Lexi. months. On the bench for months, and now she's back, and we still don't know quite what she's doing. But she's had a couple of matches. She looks good. She looks normal. Um, I mean, obviously, she was getting married in that off time. But, um... You gotta let that one go. No! Look, man. On the way down to the roster, um... On the way down. It's one of Ryan really? Cabrera's songs. That's why I um, signed. <laughs> um, we, Pop culture, people. We saw that Alexa was kind of lost in the shuffle. I think at one point even she was questioning, like, what am I? Well, she even what said is... it herself on her Twitter. 
I don't know what's going on. If this is my siren song, not to say literally in those words, right? Is this my goodbye? What is happening? Even she questioned, what are you guys doing with me? And I think to, to, to kind of go back for a second, that was the problem with Sasha and Naomi. There was no clear cut direction. And like, I think that's the part that sucks that when you don't know what you're doing, you can have a championship over your shoulder, but if it means nothing and at the last minute, it's a prop. Yeah. It's like you said, Vince is just going to tear up the paper and we're going to drum up something on the spur of the moment. But does it work? Because, yeah, nobody goes to see the theater to see the props. Nobody yeah. goes to the theater to stare at the actors. They go to the th- to the theater for a show. Yeah. And if the show sucks, if the, performance. the plot is garbage, then what are you doing? You're wasting everybody's time. The I'm... actors, the performers, the crew, the audience. I was going to say a cruel joke, but... <laughs> Please go ahead. No, I was going to say, in that case, I'm going to the theater. I'm, I'm there to see the chair. If the actors suck and the performance sucks. Oh, look at the upholstery on that. It's so nice. Hey, where do I get that from? <laughs> what me? kind of fabric is that he's wearing? Excuse me, did you get that at Pottery Barn? We're performing. Yeah, I don't care. I need to care where you bought it. <laughs> but you, that's the aggressive point right now. And it's, look, I get it. If you guys have heard us constantly, we're always nitpicking at WWE. Yes, we've yet to really nitpick at an AEW event. But what is there to nitpick right now over there? I mean, there is a few things, but it's not like the the, the gigantic garbage amounts fire. of garbage fire you have with the WWE. And I'm sorry, but something you tried with that... How long ago was that women's pay-per-view? Evolution? Jesus. Yes, 2018. Um, October of 2018. We're in 2022 now. You have, in my personal opinion, since that moment and since Becky's main event WrestleMania moment have done nothing to really revolutionize this women's culture, this women's roster, this, this movement you were supposed to do. Like, yes... You're finally getting out of the diva era. You're finally getting out of bra and panties matches. You're putting women in as athletes and wrestlers. And to use their term, superstars. <laughs> you're, you're finally utilizing them for who they're supposed to be. What they train to be. But what have you honestly done to make us be like, Oh, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. It seems like we remember more botches and you know, mistakes and wrongdoings than we do the good stuff. And literally when it's like, okay, well, this month it's been three months. All right, you, 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 and you. Peace out. Who do we got left? All right, we got to figure out something here. Uh, Let's put you two in a faction. You get back down to catering or some shit. Uh, you go in a 24-7 yeah, championship storyline. You get into a weird, wacky wedding involving that 24-7 storyline, and you will bring you back to a pay-per-view. The next Saudi Arabia show. And we'll still keep you off TV right after that, because we got nothing. Like, what does that say? about Mansoor? <laughs> oh, no, they won't need a Mansoor because they have Veer Mahan now. Let's not let's not <sighs> veer into that direction. But uh, psh. but yeah. Look, here's the thing. But I've you get my this. point. Like, I think what you're trying to say, and tell me if you agree. I've always said this about AEW. When I watch AEW, I am watching a wrestling show that is not insulting my intelligence. I am seeing a show where they take storyline one and they continue it until the big pay per view. With WWE, I could see this storyline today. By next week, they've forgotten about it. Well, and I think that's one of the the problems is that that AEW stitches their stories together. Even the botches. And even ironically with their stories, if you start forgetting about it, at one point, it'll come back. Like uh, Serena Deeb and Hikaru Shida. 
Like, that was a little bit overplayed, I will admit, but they had a good way of, like, bringing it back. Like, and remember, actually, like, Serena yeah. does not like, what's her name? We forgot about that, because Serena's on her own path right now. Far away from the straight edge society, mind you. Yeah. So, but I mean, with that, I mean, let's talk about it then. So, the current WWE roster. Yeah. Okay, let me put you guys in the position of the executives, of, of, the, of Vince McMahon himself. If oh, they came God, to you man. and they said, okay, this women's division, it's not really worth it. are fire! Well, yeah, you could do that, but then you don't have a division left. Um, <laughs> if they put you in the place of power... I'm going to get real drastic here in a second with it, but go ahead. Fair. Um, what would you guys do? What steps would you take? I want to hear his drastic step first. Go ahead. I would take... All of the women off television. Wow. Immediately. Not, yes. I would take all of them off television. You're talking... Reformulate. You're talking from A-listers to literally caterers. Yes. Okay. You take all of them off TV. You figure out a game plan. Like, you come up with a, with long-term stories. You repackage some tag teams. You build something. You build a core. You build tag teams. Yeah, you build a foundation. And then you reintegrate them... Fresh. Like, and that's not to say that people have to lose their characters, but you, you take things that make sense. You put them together. You say, okay, we want to give you guys time. We want to dedicate time to you. So, you two are together. You two are together. You two are together. You two are together. You build a tag team division as opposed to this patchwork nonsense that we're always dealing with where it's, okay, Sasha and Naomi, I can buy this. They have history. They know each other. They were in uh, Team, team B- Bad, Bad yeah. together. But then you got Shayna and, and um, the, the, the other one, Natalia. She's so... That's so bad. But you've got Shayna and She's and bad in her own right. You guys are both wrong. But like, she's the boat. But so... Oh, she's and, a boat already. And that, <laughs> and that component of her character is obnoxious. And I Extremely. Get, but so like even that. Shayna and Natty. You've got the heart and the spade correlation if you had taken them off TV, developed that, and then put them back in instead of just suddenly springing it onto the TV, it could have been something. But they also don't seem to take the take this stuff seriously. Well, there's also things that's right in front of your face. I don't know if the raccoon would be a big fan of this, but you can have Ronda and Shayna in a tag team. Yeah. Because that, it's it's there. The four horse women of MMA, it's right there. Yeah. Two of the four, technically. Well, yeah. But, I mean... And I know we've talked a little bit about that, where you, occasionally you stumble, like, you stumble down the rabbit hole of... Asuka and Kyrie, where you just pair people for the sake of pairing them due to Are similarities. Are we going to say it? Okay. Um, he didn't say it. But... I don't like, think you should say it. But, I mean, it, if that's all you've got to go with, it's not the worst channel to go, as long as you don't make it a caricature. Like, there was... I, I didn't have any problem with Asuka and Kyrie being a tag team. We acknowledged that, that that's why they were together, but I didn't have a problem with it because they're both good. We took the team seriously. They were there. They performed. Great. That's all you need. So, before I get to my side of it, yeah, I have a question to pose to you. Okay. Are you taking a survey here? Hey, yeah. Rest in peace. Are you deliberately taking these women off the air and recreating, like, and NXT 3.0 just for them, or there's no TV involved? I would put them back on the main program. I would put them back on Raw and SmackDown after we had a game plan. But instead of flying by the seat of our pants, we stitch something together, we build something, and then we go in on it. So it would sort of be, sort of be like an NXT 3.0 that you integrate. Well, you can also just have your Raw and SmackDown championship feuds. Yeah. So you just have four people two on each feud and then you'd be like while we're doing that we have head writers figuring out what we're gonna do with the rest of the women's roster yeah but you could like all you could also almost treat the women's roster like its own show without thinking about it as part of raw or smackdown and you'd probably be more effective i'd be up for that so let me let me play what would you do yes let me play the devil's advocate in my way i i would Take elements of your idea. I The first one I would do, for sure, I'd take them all off the air. 
I'd rip them all. I'd rip Liv Morgan and Rhea out of Judgment and Too Sweet, if that's what they're called. Do they even have a faction name? I think it's Bullet Club at this point. Okay, fine. Bullet Club 7, 8.0, whatever the hell they are. It's CQ. Oh, it is. Anyways, um, I would take that idea. I would... If I would like to, at one point, to reinvigorate this women's roster from both brands, I would have a legitimate, a legi- not this makeshift BS queen of the ring tournament they tried to have. Now, I'm not saying it because she won it. I'm saying a legitimate five to ten minute, whatever legitimate length of matches. Yeah, those matches were bogus. Exactly. They were like but actually 40, make, 50 seconds. Actually make them legitimate matches with every single female on the roster. All from Raw, all from SmackDown. Uh, a legitimate 16, like 8-8. Eight, eight, till we get down to the final two of who wins. And in that tournament... You can literally write, start writing in like, oh, well, I lost. I'm bitter. But you lost too. Like legitimate. Like let's say you put the raccoon and, and, and the queen of spades. We, we've been on hiatus for quite some time. I just want to make sure people are refreshed to the fact that raccoon is Ronda Rousey. I just want to throw that out there very explicitly for the people who aren't privy to that. Well, we did call her other <laughs> things, too. but Yeah, but we're just going to limit it to we, that. We've now. gone PG since then, but continue. <laughs> but, like, let's say, like, in, within this tournament, you, you have legitimate women who've lost. And they're like, okay, these two legitimately work as a tag team. Or, hell, if this one was still there, which is still pisses me off to this day that they got ripped as a tag team. If Shotzi and Tegan, Mm. if Tegan was still employed by the WWE and they lost in their respective matches, they were a good tag team for those few months and then they decided, oh, we're going to fire you, make you a horrible heel that eventually turns back into a face like that. But at least, you know, let's fix you. And hell, whoever wins the tournament, self-proclaimed queen. Gets I'm, a title I'm, shot. Get, like, have a reward. Have Have a legitimate reward. And don't a just put a TR on it. I will be queen of the ring with the scepter in my hand. I right. don't care. But that's also what we've gotten away with with a lot of the events. But we need to stop getting away with these events. And then in my hands, we won't be getting away with these things because yeah. we will legitimize... This women's roster to be something. I wasn't defending. No, no, I know. (laughs) No, but I'm saying like in that aspect, like I would try to revitalize this women's roster because if this is what's supposed to lead into the future, why are you shitting all over it? I'm sorry, but right now, this women's roster is being shat on so bad, and it sucks. And it's like rightfully so, because I mean. You know, it's not one of those things where it's good, but we're just deciding to not recognize. Well, it. Like I'm, like I'm not saying AEW's women's roster is. Oh, it's not. Better. By, not by. They have their own flaws and like problems, but they're. I'd rather watch them right now than what I'm watching with WWE right now, and that's pretty bad as as a fan. Well, let me pause it a real quick point of reference. Um, Raw is real heavy. SmackDown is real light. Yeah. Because you think about, just like, they were about to have Lacey on SmackDown, and then they threw her over there, and so then at that point you have Bianca and Becky and Oscar and uh, Lacey and Rhea, Rhea and Alexa. Alexa and, geez. And then you haven't stopped. Right? And then on SmackDown you've got Shotzi. Ronda. And Shotzi. And Shotzi. And Aaliyah. And that's Aaliyah. it. Aaliyah. That's all you got. Nothing against her, but that's all you have. Well, here's the thing, too, and I'm not just picking on her. I'm just pointing it out like it is. You look at Ronda, so she's already triumphed over Raquel. She's beat um, Aaliyah, I believe, in, like, the the Beat the Clock Challenge. She beat Shotzi in, like, a minute and some odd seconds, and it's like, okay, here we go. You're doing what you did last time with Ruby Riot and everybody else that came before, and... 
you're burying talent and then when you shove them in my face like a queen zelina i'm supposed to care so here's my thing and that's the problem with those those Su- those actual superstars. That's the problem with Brock and it's the problem with Ronda is you bring in these legitimized fighters and then you expect these twiggy bitches to be able to beat her. <laughs> or him. I guess I'll express what I, what I would do. Um, it's like I said. I would have my two women championship feuds going on and then in the background I would be having meetings and trying to figure out what do we do with the rest of the roster. The women's tag team championships, I would make it so that you can go from brand to brand. So it's not just a Raw thing. It's not a SmackDown thing. You can go to NXT UK. You can go to NXT. You can go to Raw. You can go to SmackDown. Would you phase out the tag team titles that are elsewhere and just have one? Probably. Probably, yeah. Because then at that point, it becomes SmackDown tag team championships, Raw tag team championships, Having a, a, a championship on each brand is just a little too much, which is why I'm so thankful that they combined both the heavyweight championships and the tag team championships because at right this now. point, it was becoming too much. But I would have these tournaments, the Queen of the Ring or something else where there's implications. There is some reward. It's not just you put a TR on someone. Yeah, you won the tournament. It's a footnote in your career. Make it seem important. You know, trade off ideas with these with these women wrestlers. What ideas do you guys have? If I, if I put you with so-and-so, can you guys go into a room for 30 minutes and think of your program for the next four, five, six months? And your poor excuses of a tag team, which borderline, these tag teams last for like two months, three months, where it's like back in the day, there's a reason why you remember the Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, the APA, the Dudley Boys, because it wasn't a two, three month thing. It was years. There's a reason why now we remember FTR because it's not a two day thing. It's not a two month thing. It's years at this point, and they're actually they're doing things. They're reaching these milestones. The, that and it's the time investment. That's that's what yeah. makes it work. That's why you have the new day, the Usos, FTR, um, and Zed. that. <laughs> but Follow, if you hear me. But, like, there you go. Like, I ran out of tag teams really fast because of that exact problem. So, yeah. I, I, I think that the, 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 the ultimate fix is boiling it down and taking the time to genuinely develop something and put the heart into it. And shit, if they need, to, if they need an actual writer's room to treat this like a TV show then they should do it instead of just grabbing a bunch of yes men and Vince standing in the corner doing stuff. Um, I, th- I think that they, they have to. You're not going to fix it otherwise. And like, not to say that you do this, fix the women, and then you do the same thing with the men. But you, at that point, more gradually do the same thing with the men. You pull people, like you've got so many people sitting at home, just pair a couple of them together that makes sense give them a team name instead of Mustafa Ali and Mansoor and let them develop a team. Let them develop an identity. Not everybody, I hate to say it, not everybody needs a shot at the world title. But don't they? No. No, no. I... There are so many superstars. Becky right now could not be in a title match and she can still be relevant. Same thing with Bianca. Same thing with Sasha. Same thing with Bailey. And this is more of what we'll get into in the next episode. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, and I think that's the problem is that if you look at other eras, there was your championship feuds and then there were all these other superstars feuding for different reasons. Whether it was supremacy, whether it was I'm the superior athlete, whether it was you killed my dog and I'm seeking revenge now or whatever. They had something, but now it seems like women's uh, championship matches, everybody else in catering because we don't have ideas. And it's like if, if these writers are genuinely writers, which they're not, they're just, you know, graduates from a school and they have a degree in writing and it's like, oh, you can book. A- and some of them aren't even. I hate to go back to this, but you had that one writer who was like, yeah, the Bobby Lashley was champion at the time. Yeah, this, our world champion, Bobby Ashley. And it's like, you don't even know. Like that, that just, that, that, that should set it in for you. Like that's, that's where they're at. They don't even know the name. You need people who care about 
the product and care about making a good product because otherwise you're not going to get anything. We need a Dan on the writing team. So I, th- I think that basically boils this one down. We can delve into it more in the next episode. Though. Yes, absolutely. But Any other remaining thoughts about the walkout or the women's uh, current roster? Roster. I'm square. I'm good. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of AWP, the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Let us know your comments. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section of what do you think about Sasha and Naomi's walkout and what do you think of the current WWE uh, women's roster. Until next time, thank you so much for joining us and we will catch you all on the next time.